Thanks for clicking on to the Boxing Day edition of Vogan's European Outlook. A lot of things to get through, but I want to first of all uh, wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Hope you've uh, enjoyed your Christmas day and indeed your Boxing Day. Um, enjoying the festivities and having some quality time with friends and family. Uh, of course, after the days of COVID and whatnot, um, things are, are pretty much back to normal again. So... Um, we are getting the chance to to enjoy life once again, um, you know, in, in relatively normal terms. But of course, there is always exceptions to that people who are no longer with us. And um, our thoughts obviously go back to, to family that we've lost in the past and friends and whatnot. So um, it always can be a, a time of mixed blessings, I suppose, um, when it comes to the Christmas and New Year period. But um in terms of the weather, anyway, uh, we had a, a fairly mild overall Christmas day as forecasted by MarcoWinWeather.com. We did have a last gasp Christmas of uh, snow in parts of the northwest. I believe parts of Lothian as, as well had the uh, snow fallen around um, the latter, latter half of Christmas day. And indeed, here in Evanton, Rosshire, just about uh, what 16 miles north of Inverness, we did waken up to a light dusting of snow this morning and um, a kind of crunchy icy mess actually but um i don't know whether that arrived before midnight or not so i don't know if, if obviously you know an official white christmas has to be where it snows at an official med office weather station of course um so yeah we've got snow showers rattling in at the moment we've got an area of low pressure that's a uh, almost bang slap over the Faroe islands at the moment uh, you can see here at the very top of this ECMWF chart some very strong winds associated with this low uh, and we've got um, probably blizzard conditions out over the Atlantic here uh, in this section of the Atlantic and indeed across the northwest we've got uh, some fairly brisk northwesterly winds and some snow showers rattling in. Those snow showers kind of pep up for a time during this evening um, as you can see here uh, but of course we're casting our eyes to this next system coming in off the Atlantic that will arrive tomorrow morning. So uh, as that um, system there pulls away, we do get a brief spell of slightly lighter winds, nice clear skies. So the temperatures are going to fall away quite sharply. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a minus six or seven, um, you know, over the Highlands say, tonight. And then, of course, as we rattle through the, the second half of the overnight tonight, we are going to see that next band of rain moving in off the Atlantic associated with low pressure to the south of uh, Scotland. We're going to see pretty much all rain. Uh, southern uplands and the southern and central highlands is going to see a, a spell of, of fairly persistent So I think above 200 metres, so tricky conditions across high-level road routes, of course. And, of course, wind and rain uh, across the bulk of, uh, of England and Wales, as you can see here. Then as we push through the second half of the week, we we'll just get this next wave of low pressure moving in, bringing a squeeze in the ice bar. So more wind, more rain, more hill snow to speak about. Um, and we've got relatively milder in place, but um, these areas of low pressure are transporting some of that colder off North America. And um, so therefore, it's not a completely mild flow. Um, we do have some uh, chillier embedded within these areas of low pressure here so this is thursday as you can see here a center just off the northwest of lewis here at 970 millibars squeezing ice bars indicate we have quite frequent windy conditions gale force winds will be probably a daily feature through this week uh, especially along coastal areas but i think we we'll have to keep a close eye on this feature here that comes in uh, during the day on friday so of course this is um you know the eve uh, of, of of New Year's Eve uh, on Friday, the 30th of December. Some very strong winds coming in associated with this uh, area of low pressure. We've got quite a, a large gradient between Europe and this feature just to the west of Scotland here. So we could have some pretty widespread gales and severe gales and exposure both uh, along the coast and high ground. But this feature may contain a little bit colder as well, so we may even see some snow even down to kind of lower levels uh, during the day on Friday. But, of course, as that feature moves uh, out of the way, um, it looks as if we're going to get more milder air moving in um, as well. So uh, it's going to be 
like I say, largely mild overall, but we are going to see enough chillier embedded within these features to bring some high ground snow, I think. And then, of course, this is the latest run of the ECMWF indicating that we have probably a fairly chilly New Year's Day across the north of the UK. We've got a wet con uh, conditions along with wind uh, across uh, more southern fringes of the UK, as you can see here, looking at the 850 temperatures here uh, for the upcoming period. And you can see what's, what's going on here in terms of the temperature profile of the atmosphere. Like I say, during New Year's Day, this is actually midnight, uh, so this is at the bells really like i say we've got chillier across the north we've got mild relatively milder across the south uh, for that period here so as we play through this week uh, one system after the next moving in we've always got a uh, milder ahead of these systems we've got colder in the back side of these systems as you can see here and um you know it's generally a, a firmly atlantic driven pattern as we leave December 2022 and open uh, January 2023 here, as you can see. And, um, you know, there is no great change in the pattern as we go into the, through the first full week of January. So, of course, I've highlighted um, with quite a, a level of, of um, confidence the big change around in the overall pattern within the Northern Hemisphere. We start lower heights across the Arctic, we raise heights across the middle altitudes. Uh, mild oceanic air flooding North America, Europe and um, parts of Asia as well. But we're holding on to some fairly cold air across parts of China, uh, the Koreas, Japan and whatnot. But as I play through off this GFS loop, this is the jet stream uh, and you're looking down over top of the Northern Hemisphere. So it's incredible strong winds coming off Asia, across the Pacific and into North America. That's wiping out the bitterly cold air that we've seen coldest Christmas Day on record for parts of Florida and other parts of the United States. Did you see the scenes out of Buffalo, New York with the, the blizzard that was seen there? But it was a, a very noteworthy cold spell and I'm going to try and do a, a bit of written content about that cold spell and uh, indeed the UK one that was seen during the first half of the month as well. I'm going to try and write some material uh, about that because we've seen some fairly significant cold, of course. But notice here the, the kind of flat nature of the jet stream circling um, right around the hemisphere within the, the middle altitude pattern. We've got uh, lower heights across the top, so the Arctic Oscillation and North Atlantic Oscillation both positive at the moment. And that is reflective of the 500 millibar pattern as well here. So we'll click, click to the current period and you can see here that we start to see the blues representing lower than normal pressure at 500 millibars congregating across the top. And therefore, you know, that's basically showing the uh, the overall positive Arctic Oscillation, North Atlantic Oscillation. But notice here that we do have some interesting things going on within the atmosphere. You can see these positives here along with the negatives kind of spinning and cycling around. What that is doing is it's creating, these are known as Roseby waves or Rosby waves within the atmosphere. So it's like ripples within the atmosphere kind of circling around the northern hemisphere and sometimes what that does is it can have uh, an upstream upward push influence or uh, within not only the tropospheric polar vortex but eventually the stratospheric polar vortex at the moment here what we've got is we've got a pretty uniform and pretty consolidated uh, you know polar vortex so basically at the moment we've got a strong polar vortex this is way up at the very top of the stratosphere by the way you can see here this nice so, uh, you know dark blue concentric in nature bang slap over the arctic region and this generally consists nicely of a mild pattern within the middle latitudes with cold air bottled up over the top of the arctic region we've got of course this purse of mild ocean air through north america through Europe and whatnot, and generally averaged above average temperatures is in response to that. But if we go back to the 500 millibar chart here of the GFS operation, you can start to see what's taking place. We'll start to see these reds here. We've got these lows. And as we progress through week one of January, you notice here that we are starting to see a little bit of a turnaround in the 500 millibar height anomaly chart. You start to see it building over top of the Arctic region once again. And this could be indications of the Manjulian Oscillation going and transitioning 
into a do I have the chart? Yes, we do. So this is the GFS Mandrillion Oscillation Forecast. And you can see off the GFS indicates it's rotating across the Pacific Ocean through phases six in the seven. And the ECMWF is a little bit more prominent, taking it uh, into a stronger phase eight and then in the one. But is the modeling now starting to sniff out the phase seven and the eight of the Mandrillion Oscillation? And also, there could, in essence, be influences taking place within the 10 millibar level so as we play through the loop now nothing's written in stone we don't get ourselves carried away there is a lot of things that has to happen for us to go down towards a sudden stratospheric warming event but the modeling is certainly sniffing out things changing from the 500 millibar level up through the column towards the 10 millibar level uh, now we've had a greatly disrupted tropospheric polar vortex over the course of you know the last four weeks or so with a lot of displacement arms of cold air stretching down in the middle altitude pattern of course but generally speaking the stratosphere and the tropospheric polar vortex have not been coupled it looks at the moment like we're seeing a little bit of a coupling between the troposphere and the stratosphere this nice uniform donut shaped powerful vortex strong winds blowing around the uh, the core of this vortex at the moment but notice here that we do as we go towards the end of week one coinciding quite nicely with the 500 millibar changes that the model is seeing are we seeing influence of roseby waves breaking and starting to slow down the winds within the zonal the zonal winds at 10 millibars are we starting to see the changes take place as you notice here, right at the very end of the loop, we've got some very strong warming taking place off Siberia. And the modeling is, is going to wax and wane back and forth. But it looks as if around the 7th of January, we have a very strong pulse of warming taking place and trying to push towards the pole. And of course, like I say, a lot of things have to take place for this to become a greater chance of a sudden stratospheric warming. But I do believe that based on my winter forecast, this would coincide perfectly, or well anyway, if, if I say so myself. Now, the December forecast did highlight that we would have a cold spell week one, intensifying through week two, and then it breaks week three. Unless there was a sudden stratospheric warming that took place during the month of December, then that, that hasn't happened. And therefore, I expected to see in week one and possibly week two of January the, the, re, the remaining of milder conditions um, within the much of the middle latitude pattern. But could we see during week one, if not week two, a, a stratospheric warming event taking place, which would lead to a colder second half to January with the possibility of, of February hosting the coldest air of the entire winter so far, of course. Uh, we've seen a, a minus 17 at Bray Mar, and um, we've seen some very impressive cold actually during the first half of December 2022. So uh, there's a lot of things that have to come about for this to take place, but there is a very, very good article written by Severe Weather Europe, which talks about the potential of not only the strengthening, we know that the polar vortex is going to strengthen but then a significant weakening of the vortex um, as we progress in the week two of January. So tremendous content delivered by this website. I do encourage you to check it out because this is the tropospheric core vortex here. There's the 10 millibar level, nice and strong. Notice here the difference between the troposphere and the stratosphere and uh, a little bit of science behind it as well. But to go on to say about how these Roseby waves developing and then have an influence slowing down the mean zonal winds within the stratosphere and that is something i'm going to try and hone in on as we progress through the next week or so so a lot of things uh, to encourage you to stay here on my channel so i do uh, appreciate first of all your viewing but also if you haven't already done so hit that subscribe button because we're going to have a look at this in more detail day by day as this may or may not develop into something so stay tuned. I do appreciate you watching it. Hope you enjoy the rest of your Boxing Day. I'll see you again tomorrow, hopefully with more. Bye for now.